I'm Joe. This lesson is an introduction to Python functions. You'll learn the basics of functions and how to write and use simple functions. For a more detailed look at functions, be sure to watch my Python functions part 2 video. Now a function is a block of statements that together perform an operation. Any operation that is used often in a program can be split into its own function. Now the benefits of using functions are that it modularizes code, which makes it easier to debug, reuse, and maintain the code, because you only have to debug it once and maintain it once when you need to make edits to it later. And it makes it easier to reuse because you can call a function from anywhere else in the program. So defining a function in Python is pretty simple. You use the keyword def, which is short for define, followed by the function name, optional parameters in parentheses, the parentheses are not optional, but parameters inside the parentheses are optional, and a semicolon. All statements inside the function must be properly indented. This is consistent throughout Python. Indentation is critical in Python. So here's a simple function, def my function. Here we're not taking any arguments at all, so there are no parameters inside the parentheses. And then we have the semicolon. All this function does is print, this is my function. So how do we call this function? Well, here's our function. And outside of the function, we have a simple function call. My function, and then parentheses. And this is just the line of code that's going to execute after my function. So what happens when we call my function from outside of the function? Let's say the main part of the program. Execution transfers up to the my function line. Next, the print statement will execute. This is my function, and we'll see output. This is my function. And then next, execution will return to the line immediately after our function call. So x plus equals 1 in this case. So that's how a simple function call works. A function can return one or more values to the caller. This square function receives one parameter, x, and it returns x squared. So the square function, all it does is square an integer. So def square x. Now note that if you're familiar with other programming languages like C or Java, we don't have to declare the type of x. Python does that automatically. But how we use x defines really what kind of value you can pass to x. So the square function just returns x squared, x times x. So we can call our square function like this. Let's take a value, a variable j, and set it equal to 3. And then we'll call the square function on j and assign the return value to i. So when we do this, we assign x the value of 3 because j is equal to 3. So at this point x equals 3. And then we return x squared or 9. And we assign that value 9 to i. So it's a pretty simple function call and then return value. Now x is a local variable inside the square function. All local variables in a function are temporary and are lost after the return statement. So after we return from the function square, x is no longer usable. x is gone. Okay, now we just have variables i and j. So we can print j. This will print a 3. We can print i. That prints 9. Or instead of assigning the return value to variable i, we could just print it directly. If all we want to do with the return value is just print it, it's maybe easier to say j equals 3, print square of j. It'll print 9. It does the same function call and returns a 9, but instead of assigning the 9 to a variable i, we're just printing it directly. So we saved one variable here, variable i. But now we don't have access to the 9 for future use if we need it, okay? 
So it really depends on what you want to do with that return value. If all you need to do is print it or use it in a calculation, then you don't have to assign it to a variable. You can just use it directly. But if you need that value later on for other calculations, then you have to assign it to a variable. Now if the function returns a value, the function call itself can be used as a value. So in this case, x equals 5 times square of 3. So square of 3 is like a 9. So this is like saying x equals 5 times 9. So it's going to assign 45 to variable x. Functions often receive multiple parameters. There's actually no limit on the number of parameters you can pass to a function. So in this function, min, we pass two parameters, num1 and num2. And it really just finds the min of those and returns the minimum. So here's a function call, print min of 3 comma 5. It passes 3 to num1 and 5 to num2. And then it returns a 3 because 3 is less than 5. And then it's going to print the 3. There's your output. So that concludes part 1 of Python functions. We'll take a more in-depth look at functions in the functions part 2 video. I'm Joe. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.